Hi there, I'm Eric and welcome to Going Solar with Pivot Energy. As we explored in previous videos on the top 10 benefits of solar, there's a long list of compelling reasons why you should make the switch to solar energy. But today we're going to focus more on the types of financial incentives that are available for solar projects. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand a little bit more about how they all work. If you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in commercial solar and community solar, please give our channel a subscribe. incentive I'd like to talk about today is the Federal Investment Tax Credit, or ITC for short. It was originally created in 2005 as part of the Energy Policy Act, and when the expiration of the credit was set to occur in 2015, the solar industry worked with stakeholders to extend that credit so as not to stall the double-digit year-on-year growth that our industry has seen. This is arguably the most impactful piece of federal policy in regards to growth of the solar industry as a whole. And how successful, you may ask? Well, according to the Solar Energy Industries Association, or SIA for short, the solar industry has seen growth of over 10,000% since that ITC was originally enacted. Under the extension in 2015, the ITC retained its 30% value, but was set to taper off year over year, starting actually here in 2020. So this year in 2020, that federal tax credit is set at 26%. Starting in 2021, that federal tax credit is going to reduce to 22% and 10% every year thereafter. So let's look at this from an example standpoint. Let's say you have a $100,000 solar project. $26,000 of that solar project is eligible for a federal tax credit. That's a large chunk of the total amount that you're actually paying for that project. Now, the bill language is slightly different for residential versus commercial customers, you know, homes versus businesses, but it equates to a dollar for dollar reduction in your total tax liability that you owe Uncle Sam. Keep in mind that your business must have the tax liability. You have to owe these taxes in order to be able to utilize the value of that tax credit. So it's something you should definitely consult with your tax professional to see if that's a possibility. But even if it isn't, there are now financing mechanisms that are allowed for solar projects that can utilize the ITC even if you cannot utilize it yourself. So the second incentive I'm gonna talk about today is depreciation. And depreciation is an expense to lower your tax liability from the most basic sense. Most of business owners are familiar with utilizing depreciation for different assets that they buy for their business. But there's a distinction between the investment tax credit and depreciation that I wanna point out here, where the investment tax credit is a dollar for dollar credit on your tax liability, and depreciation is a tax deduction, reducing your total taxable income for your business. Most businesses are using a five-year modified accelerated cost recovery system, or MAKERS, when you apply depreciation. But under the 2018 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, solar became eligible for 100% bonus depreciation. What this means is that you can depreciate the entire asset or the cost of the project in the first year of operation. So your eyes may be glazing over on this, all this tax jargon, but let's keep it simple. In the most basic terms, whether you're using a five-year makers or 100% bonus depreciation, solar projects qualify for deductions for tax purposes. And you should consult with your tax advisor regarding your specific scenario and how you can take advantage of this incentive. So we covered the primary federal tax benefits associated with solar energy projects. Now let's explain other possible incentives that may be available within your market. Starting with SREX. SREX stands for Solar Renewable Energy Certificate. And what it is, is the unique identifiable certificate of your solar production or that renewable energy. It's a way to account for the environmental value of the renewable energy production, aside from just the energy itself. SREX are applicable in states or markets with a solar policy that sets a mandated renewable portfolio standard or RPS. We'll discuss the Renewable Portfolio Standard in a different video about policy and encourage you to watch that as well. So in those markets where there's a mandate to have a percentage of electricity come from renewable or carbon-free sources, the owners of solar projects can sell that SREC to help the state or that utility reach that mandated amount of renewable energy production. For example, here in Colorado, when Excel Energy states that they're switching to 100% carbon-free electricity by 2050, 
their purchase of SREX from customer-owned solar projects is part of that mix that allows them to help reach that goal. And the policies are different state by state and even within each utility with regards to how SRECs are purchased and how that actually functions. The SREC value is also something that can fluctuate based on utility or state. So a SREC could be an SREC market where it's a market-based value for the value of that renewable energy certificate based on how many SRECs are being sold in the market at that time. Or the SREC can be set at a fixed rate based on the legislation or policy that is set in that particular state or utility area. We can help you learn how or if this may apply to you based on your location, your utility, and the policy that's available in your area. Another type of incentive that is available is called a feed-in tariff. And it's generally associated with utilities purchasing the SREC that we just talked about, but also purchasing all of the electricity production from a solar project as well. It's quite popular internationally, like in Germany, but it's starting to be adopted a lot more across the United States today. Under a feed-in tariff, utilities are mandated to enter into long-term contracts to purchase all of the electricity generated by a solar project at a fixed rate. This type of actual solar connection does not send the power into your building, but actually sends all of the electricity from the array directly into the grid with the utility buying all of that energy, which feeds into the grid, hence the term feed-in tariff. So for example, there's a current feed-in tariff in Massachusetts called MA Smart, or the Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target Program. And the value for the electricity through this smart program is extremely high, which provides great financial returns for purchasing solar electric systems. But because that value is so high, it also allows for a unique project structure whereby the facility owner with no out-of-pocket cost can get paid to rent their roof to host a solar project. Under this program structure, the feed-in tariff value would go to the owner of the solar project and they would be receiving that benefit, but also be required to maintain the system and ensure that it's producing electricity, providing the greatest return for them. That system owner would then pay you as the facility owner a fixed rate to be able to utilize your roof. The basic key points to this structure is that it requires no out-of-pocket cost on your behalf, no requirement for you to utilize the tax credit or depreciation or any of the other incentives that we're talking about, and really no risk related to the system. It just provides you with a guaranteed revenue stream for hosting the project on your site. Another financial incentive that's available for solar projects are rebates. And states, utilities, or even cities may offer rebates for solar projects to be installed in that area. And rebates are essentially upfront cash payments dependent on the specific size of the system or the equipment that's being installed. Don't worry though, we'll help you identify if any of those rebates are available. And not to go back to the tax detail a little bit more, I don't want to bore you too much, but there is another potential financial incentive on a state level, which are tax exemptions. And many states have exemptions for either sales tax or property tax as it relates to a solar project. And we can look into this for your project as well. Another financial incentive that's available are grants. And there are numerous grants that have been created and awarded to help spur solar development. Many organizations have applied for and have been awarded these grants to help them fund their solar project that benefits farms, schools, or low-income or underserved populations. A few examples of these are the Green Retrofit Grants offered by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the U.S. Department of Energy's Tribal Energy Program, the Rural Energy for America Program, or REAP, or the U.S. Department of Agriculture's High Energy Cost Grant. Now, we here at Pivot Energy don't assist with grant writing or applying for grants, but we just wanted to make you aware that those grants could be available if your organization qualifies for them. And last but not least, one of the major financial incentives of going solar, <laughs> utility bill savings. Likely one of the most well-known incentives and one of the main reasons why businesses go solar is to save money on their ever-increasing costs of electricity on their electric bill. So we covered the way it works in the Clean and Renewable Solar Power Explained video, which is also on YouTube and worth checking out. But basically, every kilowatt hour produced from solar is one less kilowatt hour that you have to buy from a utility. In most cases, a policy of net metering allows you to receive a one-for-one -one credit 
for that energy production that you produce with your solar system. So you consume all of the energy that that system produces, the excess feeds into the utility grid, and then you're able to pull that credit back at night when the solar system is not producing and effectively eliminate most of the electricity charges that you have on your electric bill. That reduction is the electricity you would have to buy from your utility anyway. Now keep in mind, if you don't go solar, you will pay your electricity bill forever. Forever. And what we're doing here with solar is really allowing for a different approach to your electricity allowing you to purchase the panels and own that electricity production and receive credit for that energy that you're not using from your utility, hedge yourself against the ever rising cost of electricity and allow you to provide even a cleaner, renewable energy power source for your business. All right, there you have it. Some of the primary tax breaks and financial incentives associated with solar projects. These drivers have really helped expand solar projects across the country, making them more accessible and more affordable than they've ever been in the past. Now there's certainly more that we did not explore today and not all of these incentives that we talked about will apply to you or apply to your specific market. To see incentives offered by state or local governments, utilities, and other organizations, an exhaustive list can be found on the Desire website. We provided a link below. Just a heads up that these programs can change from year to year, so some of the information on that website may be dated or may not be available anymore. That's why it's so important to work with an experienced solar developer that can help take advantage of these incentives and help you understand what is available within your particular market. While these incentives may change and things may come and go, the experience of our company is always here for you. If you're interested in installing solar on your business or building, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you explore the options and see whether or not solar makes sense for you. Pivot Energy is a certified B Corporation, and we have years of experience and decades of combined experience in developing solar projects across the country, both for community solar or for commercial solar. We can help you and your business from the initial feasibility and analysis through contracting, planning, construction, and long-term operation and maintenance of your system. We can also help you finance the system if that's a solution that you need. Don't worry, we've got you covered. If you made it this far, you must mean business about utilizing financial incentives and looking into solar projects for your business. We're here to help you. If you have any further questions, post them in the comments below. And don't hesitate to reach out to me via email. My email's in the description. Also, visit our website at www.pivotenergy.net for more information. We'll catch you next time on Going Solar with Pivot Energy.